nitrogen in its natural form is almost completely inert and about 78% of the air around you is nitrogen. So if you feel a wind, most of that is just nitrogen gas. What I have in here is uh, liquid nitrogen. So this is nitrogen that's been compressed and cooled down to below 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And at that point, it becomes a liquid. And I'm going to now demonstrate how unbelievably cold liquid nitrogen is. And the way I'm going to do this is by liquefying air. So I'm going to pour some into this bottle. And hopefully you'll be able to see little drops of air, of liquid air. So here's a close-up of this liquid air dripping off the bottom. And it's instantly vaporizing as it hits the sidewalk, which is pretty cool, as it hits the driveway. Okay, so here I've just got a bowl of liquid nitrogen. And right here, I've just got regular old room temperature water. I'm going to pour the water into the liquid nitrogen and it's going to make a huge amount of steam and actually nitrogen and the water is going to instantly turn to ice. Okay, I'm going to pour out the nitrogen and you're going to see there's ice in the, in the bottom. So this is just regular ice and the thing about it is that it's very very cold much colder than normal ice because I've cooled it down with liquid nitrogen okay so now I'm going to demonstrate what happens when you take ordinarily very bouncy things like this rubber ball and put it into a liquid that is at negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit Okay, so now I'm going to drop this very bouncy, what was a very bouncy rubber ball, on the ground. If I can get it out of the nitrogen. Okay, so here's just a normal onion at room temperature, and I'm just going to drop it. And here... I have a different onion, which is not at room temperature, which is in liquid nitrogen, and I'm going to drop it. Okay, so here's an onion, that, which is not at room temperature. Aw, oh, come on. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to nail this nail into this wood with a banana. you can see what happens. Now, let's try it with a banana that's been in liquid nitrogen. Here's our banana. Let's try to nail this nail in. Well, it <laughs> broke. But, as you can see, this nail is firmly in the wood. Okay, so here's this big balloon, and I'm going to try to fit it into this small Pyrex container. Bye.
Okay, so in here I've just got about half an inch of liquid nitrogen in the bottom of this. And I'm going to demonstrate that the pressure will build up enough to shoot this cork very high if I jam it in here. So as you saw in the previous section with the liquid nitrogen, nitrogen in its natural form is basically inert. You may be surprised to hear that individual atoms of nitrogen are extremely reactive. The reason pure nitrogen in nature is almost inert is that these atoms of nitrogen bond together to form molecules each that have two nitrogen atoms. And the bond in between these two nitrogen atoms is the strongest bond that you can have between any two atoms that are the same. You can have another bond that's slightly stronger with two different atoms, but it's one of the strongest bonds you can have. This means that the resulting molecule is extremely stable. 78% of air is just nitrogen gas in this diatomic form, which is extremely stable. So, if you look around you, you're basically looking through nitrogen, and it is clearly very inert. Almost inert. Uh, I can't say very inert. Inert is inert. It is almost inert. But if you separate out this diatomic molecule into atoms of nitrogen, that means you're putting a huge amount of energy into this molecule to separate it. And because energy is conserved, if you put it, them back together, a huge amount of energy is released. This fact is utilized in many explosives that you hear of, like TNT and um, dynamite. What works, the reason these explosives are explosive is because they have individual nitrogen atoms which are separated. And when they're burnt, and in the case of fully nitrated nitroglycerin, which is the active ingredient in dynamite, you can just hit it with a hammer and it will explode because the nitrogen is combining to form just normal diatomic, ni completely inert nitrogen gas, but in that process makes a huge amount of heat. So I'm going to demonstrate this fact right now with these two cotton balls. Right here, I've got just a normal cotton ball you get at the drugstore. And then here is a slightly deformed one. They look pretty similar, but this one is very different. What I've done to this one is I've soaked it in a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid, which attaches these nitro groups onto the cellulose molecule to make it much more reactive. So what I've got here essentially is separated nitrogen atoms, which when I burn it will combine and create a huge amount of energy. So in a second, I'm going to burn both of these, and you're going to see one will have a kind of small, one will kind of smolder, and the other will do something very different. Okay, so I'm going to light the normal cotton ball on fire, and I really don't need this fancy match on a stick, but. Um, I will need it for the nitro cotton, so I'm going to do it anyway. Like this, ready, set, burn! Woo, not that exciting. Okay, now let's try nitro cotton. Okay, whoop, so now let's light our nitro cotton on fire. There we go. Match on a stick to nitro cotton. Okay, so as you can see, I made quite a bit uh, a few days ago. I, I used, I actually used up quite a bit of my nitric acid, but um, I made a lot because I wanted to burn a lot and post it on YouTube. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Let's do this a slightly larger scale. Looks like this. Here we go. Ready? Nitro cotton. 